Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorgat. Sorgatron on the Twitter is Indie Mayhem Show number 65. From Pittsburgh, PA, uh, where uh, we're at Mayhem Central, where we do a lot of stuff. Uh, myself production here for some indie wrestling around the Pittsburgh area, just coming off of the great Night of the Superstars with the IWC and Meadville, PA. We'll talk about that a little later on the show. But with me is my compatriot from San Antonio, Texas. He's the commentator. <laughs> <laughs> from Inspire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> Sorry, we had a whole thing on Wrestling Man Show tonight about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Listen to Man Show. Really get why <laughs> get that weird. So That's why we named it as such. Uh, but he's at Amon Two, please, down there in San Antonio, Texas. How you doing this week, sir? I am doing fantastic, Sorg. Uh, uh, being making sure that you know. I, I don't know what to say. That that whole intro for me. <laughs> That's all right. We'll we'll collect it I mean, now together. I'm thinking of tater jokes, and now I'm. Um, go listen to the Wrestling Mayhem show with us. And of course, we got a guest in the studio. I'll get to him in just a moment. But first, some business. Check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find this and so many other podcasts that we're doing, talking about all aspects of pro wrestling, uh, raw, from Raw Wrap-Ups to Midweek Wars to Mayhem Shows to Minutes of Mayhem. Uh, just a conversation all week long. You can join us in uh, find all the links for Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, iTunes, subscribe, commentate. Uh, let us know what you think. This is a big conversation. This is a celebration of wrestling, uh, indie and otherwise. This this show, especially for indie wrestling. You can also please check our friend out, Basic Sickness, at basicsickness.com. Check out free music, including the tracks, intro and outro to this and a wrestling mayhem show. And uh, please drop us a line. Let us know what you think about uh, indie wrestling. If you have comments for a uh, or questions for uh, uh, guests coming up on the show, or you want us to let us know who we should be checking out or maybe having on the show. Four one two two zero six. WMS Zero or Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. Let's get into it. We got a special guest in the studio. Two weeks in a row, we got somebody in the studio, not on this show, but in general. He is, uh, you may have seen him on Ring of Honor TV, on Vicious Outcast Wrestling that we've mentioned several times on this show, and, and, and a flurry of other places when I was looking at your profile earlier. We we're talking about on the Wrestling Mayhem mm-hmm. Show. Also, he joined us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, just talking wrestling. Some great insight uh, going on there. He is Chris LaRusso. Back on the show, well, back on the Mayhem Network, yes. at least. First time on the Andy Mayhem Show. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I, I We were talking about a little bit before uh, the first show mm-hmm. that you were first joined us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show in 2008. Oh, good Lord. You're one of the originals, man. Yeah, and, and as I'm, I'm, I went back, and I didn't get a chance to listen to it, but I remember, you know, like, the apartment that I was in when I did that show, and I'm going back, and I'm like, Oh, that is way too long ago. Mm-hmm. That is way too. Oh, good lord! And I think you had mentioned that I I was talking about KCW, no longer in existence. Mm-hmm. CWF, kind of no longer in existence. I think they run like one show a year. Uh, it's like a, a paid fair show. Uh, a lot of those places where it's just like. And then I was starting to think like, oh, good lord! I don't even want to think about the guys who've retired and how mm-hmm. many people have just. Oof. You were talking about like like uh, you know uh, Shirley Doe's school at the time. I yeah, forget, Shirley. Do- I remember who else had a school at the time you were you were mentioning. Shirley Doe's was because he was running IWC school at yes, the time. Yes. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know anyone else who was. Re- I mean, KCW was still in existence, so Cato might have been which, still training people. Which one was KCW? KCW not- was um, Casanova Cato's out in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Okay, and that's where I originally started. So. Um, and then I, I think I maybe had just recently started with Pro Wrestling Express uh, around that time. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I think Oof. they were. I, if I recall, I think they were NWA East at the time. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were still the NWA affiliate. So. Yeah, yeah. How times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many have been and are not NWA affiliates anymore. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, so okay. For, first of all, we'll catch up on everything here, but we'd like to start the interview with you know a little bit of get to know you question. Sure. You know, um, you know, of course, you have uh, gone the distance. You become a pro wrestler. You yes. Know? Your fandom has gone that far for you. Hell yeah. So, what is your earliest memory, or maybe the thing that got you into pro wrestling? My earliest memory of professional wrestling was when I was uh, six years old, and 
Um, it used to be that Saturday morning you would have your cartoons until about 10, 10.30, and that 11 o'clock in the morning was WWE Superstars. It was, the, it was the first show right after Saturday morning cartoons. And I remember that me and my dad would always watch Superstars together every mm-hmm. Saturday morning. And um, I was a huge fan of The Ultimate Warrior, and I would run around the house and shit, you know, which is not <laughs> behavior for a, you know, five, six year old is, you know, somewhat disturbing. Um, and the poor parents. Yeah. My what da- is going on? What is, what's happening? His promos uh, make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> that hopefully has changed. Uh, but yeah, yeah, screaming about a plague of frogs and 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 just just <laughs> have you have you gone back and listened to some of those promos, especially oh. especially with all the new stuff you know that they've been doing with WWE? Mm-hmm. And, and like I remember the self destruction of Ultimate Warrior. Like the best part of an unfortunate production was mm-hmm. everybody doing the impression of his WrestleMania yeah. promo. Tear down the cockpit door, <laughs> Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> Oh please! I was, yeah. I was amazed, and I, uh, I go for that. Like, I'm amazed how many people just knew that by heart. Oh, I, I, I think my earliest pay per view, it wasn't WrestleMania six. It was the Royal Rumble before mm. WrestleMania six, because I remember there was the moment in the Royal Rumble where Hogan and the Warrior had eliminated everyone else, and as like a, a five, six year old kid, my mind was blown. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. It's Hogan and the Warrior. Oh my yeah. and I, I like I just remember that that blew my mind. And then when it finally that WrestleMania was gonna feature that, oh we have to get this pay-per-view. We absolutely have to and my dad's like, what what's this? What are we getting? Ah, sure, whatever. You know, and uh, that was the the uh, uh that memory was the beginning really of of you know awesome. my obsession with wrestling. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. And, and of course, you can't. We, we talked about both of this years ago, so I guess we can refresh. And, mm-hmm. and you, you, as you mentioned, you trained on Altoona mm-hmm. and, uh, and and got into it. Now you've been around for for a, for a bit. Now, yeah, I mean, we're going on ten years now, and wow. it, it, that's that's insane for me to to think about because it, it you know at times it doesn't seem that long, and there's some days where you wake up and it does feel that long. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's uh, when, when I had first started. Um, I originally came in and, and Cato's school had some, had some pretty big bodies, had some pretty, uh, you know, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a way to finesse this, uh, just more physically impressive wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And I came in 160 pounds and, and, uh, you know, very, uh, very unassuming and it was very hard at initially there was some, uh. There was a lot of competition, and being the smallest guy meant you were the easiest guy to throw around. Mm-hmm. So, um, but you know, I loved it. I loved I loved wrestling, and I wasn't going to be dissuaded. Awesome. So, so you find yourself that now. Then this, I'd like to ask about this because uh, again, we we talked a little bit about PWX off air mm-hmm. and, and stuff, and about how you know mentioned the NWA East and everything. It's been around for a while. It's always been a promotion that's been like on the outer fringe of my purview watching indie wrestling here mm-hmm. in, in Pittsburgh. And it's so much easier now. Of course, they they do have TV. They do have a show on, on mm-hmm. online, so you can check out stuff. And there's there's some really cool stuff actually happening mm-hmm. over there. I recommend anybody to go check it out. Um, that's has that been the promotion you've been with the longest? Um, since KCW closed, yeah, PWX yeah. Has, has been, um, and, and PWX has been absolutely fantastic to me. Uh, you know, Jim Miller and Quinn Magnum, uh, have, have been very supportive. And one of the things that I've always liked about PWX is that they've continually challenged me. Uh, wow. There we go. Um, <laughs> for the, for the audio, we're, we're, we're yeah, showing so, off the, showing what's off going the, on on the website and yeah, everything. Um, yeah. And, and it, they, they've just, they've, they've really taken care of it. And they've also made an amazing investment into the WrestlePlex, the, bu- the, the building you see right there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when we first went down, when, when they first got this building, it was a, it was a school, uh, like an elementary school. And we went down and they unhooked, like it had been chained shut. And they broke the bolt on it and, and unchained it. I'm thinking, we're going to find the, you know, the body of a you know, drug addict in here. What is this? 
and uh, the ceilings were needed to be torn out. The whole place needed to be gutted. And they have really, and, and not just, just, you know, Jim and Quinn, but all the wrestlers and trainees and, and volunteers and, and people who, who really went in there. And yeah, me and uh, Gannon Jones Jr. Um, and, and really have turned it into a, a great little arena where, um, wow, I'm a mark for myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no um where you know it, it's got great lighting and it's got a stage and it's got a and it's also a great uh training venue where we have a chance to now you know train new students and train uh the next generation and you know it, it's fantastic it, it, they, they've, they've really done a great job Awesome. Yeah, and that's that's a cool thing to have something that's because um, I know other promotions like their school is basically like a storage room, you know. Um, and you mm -hmm. know, not just you know, I'm not pointing out anybody in particular. Like I've seen several. No, <laughs> I mean, and, and and you know, KCW, it was a it was a barn, right? And right. Um, I know that that other training schools have been. It, it, it's kind of hard because if you are going to have a training school, it's a place where you got to keep. A pro wrestling ring in first of mm -hmm. all which is not small so you mm -hmm. need space which and is height. Not, yes. that's, that's the biggest thing because mm -hmm. I, I was uh several years ago in the past life i was helping somebody find a place to put a ring to try to start a school mm -hmm. and it was just like yeah we don't have height we don't have height it, you know it, it, you know seeing like you know we've seen like an early vow show where they didn't have the height on the ring a lot you know yeah. and bad things happen to that ceiling absolutely you know? and and um if you're gonna be training you know some things that you would that, that are absolute necessities that you, training schools have had to go without, like heat, mm -hmm. like bathrooms, like uh, you know, any like the basics of a first aid kit, uh, and it, it's it's rough. Um, so when you you know you're lucky enough to have a place like the Plex, as I'm getting my head torn off right there, <laughs> um, you know it it, it it is it is very lucky to to have that i mean um and, and there's a lot of schools that that are just just you know lacking some of those some basic essentials yeah it, it's really cool i i attended again you know, the first show mm -hmm. down there it was really cool to see uh this place and of course if i'm hearing from you and other people it's, it's really grown since mm -hmm. um well let's talk about because uh, when you got, you know, one, I, you know, I saw you popping up every time I go to Ring of Honor. I'm like, oh, I know that guy yeah. <laughs> in the opening match there. Look at yeah. that. Um, but, uh, but also, uh, uh, you know, been really impressed with what's going on with VOW here in the mm -hmm. area, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Um, and, you know, guys, that we've, we've, we've been, you know, loving the support around here. We got the digital mm -hmm. downloads over on PittsburghWrestling.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I know I ran into, you know, saw you at uh, the, the Women's Mayhem one, and uh, mm -hmm. you were on commentary, and really seeing you kind of flourish as, as you know, uh, on your own a bit here. Um, and, I, and I hadn't heard, for, heard much from you for several years at that point. Well, I mean, um, I really had a had been a guy who, you know, let's, let's be honest, had just sort of been around. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd worked at PWX, worked at Black Diamond, which is, you know, the Wheeling, um, Martin's Ferry. We're also, I, I, you know. I think coming out and, and really kind of making the name too. Yeah. They, they've really, days. they've in, oh. increased their production value. But I, I was a guy who was just sort of hanging around. Uh, mm -hmm. I had been, you know, I'd been in law school for a, a good portion of my career and that had always been a, a huge time commitment and a huge uh, uh, commitment of my attention. I, I, then, I think I ran into you more downtown Pittsburgh than I did see you in a wrestling yeah, for a while. Yeah, for a while there. Um, and then sort of a, a, a friend of the show, uh, Zima Ion, a couple years ago, calls me up and he says, Hey, um, I'm doing this Ring of Honor camp. And uh, I'm going down. It's going to be a, a special for National Geographic Channel. They're doing like a special on um, on indie wrestling, and oh, I need I a ride, and I need someone to 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 go down with me. And I said, "Sure, I'll go." You know, and my initial impression was that I was just going to honestly go down to uh, to give Zima a ride. Mm -hmm. And I went there with with an attitude of, "Man, I, I don't belong here. I don't belong." With I mean, the, the, this is this is Ring of Honor. The, these are some of the best wrestlers in the world. And I looked at the other people who were trying out, and obviously Zima was absolutely fantastic. There were there were some people there who were just you know blowing people away. Um, 
Mike Seidel, who's Matt Seidel's brother. Um, mm. But there was something was lit in me there when I went. I was like, no, I can do this. I'm looking at the guys around me, and, and they're better than me. Some of them are better than me, but they don't have to be. Uh, and, and if I, you know, really, really, really kick this into high gear, you know, we might be able to do something here. And the camps were so good at coaching you. It isn't just a experience of get in, turn to the left, wrestle your five minute match. All right, get out. They they break your game down piece by piece, bit by bit, and um, show you how to how to get better you know, almost overnight. One of the things and I've been to a couple of the camps is that the difference between the day one matches and the day two matches is night and day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from that experience really, really pushed me to get into better shape, to get into better gear, to, to take it to the next level. And with that, you know, to, to push, to, to get into VOW. And from there, you know, they've been absolutely fantastic. Some of some of them in biggest high most high profile matches. The match with Davey Richards was at uh, at VOW. Yeah, ripping uh, facades hair out. That's that's always good. <laughs> um, and uh, hey, Pedro. Yeah, hey, man. Yeah, he was here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, VOW had uh, really given me some great opportunities, um, especially with some higher profile names. Like I said. Match with Davey Richards, uh, Tim Donst, uh, Shane Strickland, who is now on uh, Lucha Underground, is uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he seems very familiar to uh, that kill shot guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know. There might be. Has anyone seen them in the same place at the same time? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. Um, so, and VOW is doing a lot of great stuff. You know, not just with me, but. Uh, bringing in outside talent, and and you see some matchups there that you don't you don't see other places. Mm -hmm. I, I know we've liked you know some people that we know from like you know uh, RWA IWC that we work with. It was like mm -hmm. oh cool they get to mix it up down here and, and mm -hmm. see some cool like personal dream matches. You know mm -hmm. uh, like I, mean, I saw Facade and G Raver. That's that's one I love to see, and it, mm -hmm. it happened down there a few months ago when I I went down. So. Um, but yeah, yeah, actually, and here's you with Facade, something that, you know, we usually don't see in the other promotions because mm -hmm. a lot of talent doesn't cross over all that much. No. And, but um, uh, VOW is like just on the outskirts enough that mm. uh, we'll get off you getting your butt kicked there. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, uh, you know, but it's out, you know, it, it's outside the fringe of what's going on because this has always been the conversation from day one on this show with Jock Sampson saying there's too many promotions here. You know, mm -hmm. that's always been the conversation. And it does. There's like these three clustered in like a 10 mile radius, you know, and, and, you know, and none of them actually in Pittsburgh. No, no, like but the, the, KSWA is the only one in Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. And it seems like they're not even acknowledged by all the rest of them. Um, so mm -hmm. it, it's really interesting there to see that. And plus, we, you know, we have VOW in the south, and I think there's another one uh, down there. And we have like, you know, a five star happening up and uh, towards, I think it's East Brady up that way. Is that like towards Butler sort of? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's north of the city. But, you know, it's far enough that it's not like mm -hmm. interweaving with. And actually a lot of IWC talent is is involved mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the guys that were in Meadville were on the show in Zima. It was Shima, mm -hmm. Zima. Whatever, well, it depends on how long you've how known long him. How long you've known him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like he's always Shima. He's always going to be, right? Uh, but I try to remember, mm -hmm. okay, people know him from TNA. I mean, I still say Logan Shulo all the time. Oh, he's so. always going to Shulo. It's, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's just going to be. Solomon Crow is always going to be. Mm -hmm. Sammy Callahan, Sammy Callahan. Right? you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, but that that shows where it was from, you know. Sure. So um, even when, when people's real names, it's like you're you're still Marshall Gambino, even though I know what your real name <laughs> yeah, is yeah, yeah. on yeah. LinkedIn, right? Um, so you mm -hmm. know, something like that. I'm not going to spell Chuck Roberts' real name, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Doctor Feelbad. Um, I'm no, so, I, I don't. Jeez, oh good lord. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah, he's Doctor Feelbad. I'm so, so glad my invoice is to Justin Plummer now. <laughs> I can find that. But anyways, uh, but but enough of that. But uh, uh, no, yeah, and, and again, you know. Uh, you know, both of these guys, well, you know, have some presence on television, but I, you know, we've debated before is, is presence on television, at least in a small market, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or at least, you know, cable access or whatever, or WBGN mm -hmm. or whatever they happen to be on. Is that really as much exposure? And we talked about exposure a bit on the wrestling mayhem show tonight mm -hmm. under that big question. Um, 
um, you know, they're on the internet. The stuff is freely available. I was able to you know, find how much stuff with you right here mm -hmm. just to show off on the show. Um, you know, how important is that today? What, what are you guys looking for indie, on the indies for exposure? Because I know a lot of people would be attracted to Prime Wrestling because they had television on Sports Time Ohio. Sure, sure. They had a little bit of wire, wider distribution at the time because I think they might have been on Dish Network or something. Mm -hmm. So they could say like, hey, I think we, they were, yeah, they were like we a have national yeah. coverage because if you had a satellite, you, you could get it in mm -hmm. California and they were watching facade and whoever else went up there she met mm -hmm. the time you know yeah. uh, gregory iron um is this something you look for when you look for somebody to work with in these days in this day and age i mean there's when you're looking for 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 what you want um there's obviously money is a major consideration and, and you're somebody you know again yeah. we talked about last you've been on ring of honor you can sure. you, you can kind of pick and choose a little bit now right um a, a little bit i mean i'm still trying to fill my calendar out as much exactly. as possible i think the primary thing is getting as friends if, as in front of as many eyeballs as possible right and um you know being on ring of honor is being in front of a lot of eyeballs mm -hmm. um for you know a situation where uh pwx is on roku now and so oh. there's there's a, a an indie wrestling channel on Roku, really, and um, that has, I believe, like one of the other promotions is the Wild Samoans promotion, uh, the uh, WXW, the, the one out in like uh, like like uh, east of East Pennsylvania. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and um, so, and we've heard that there's been, you know, how many hundred people view that channel, and I mean, streaming service is always a little, you know, iffy about how many people are actually viewing it but mm -hmm. i mean we there's been some pretty good numbers with that you look at uh places like maybe like a beyond or a pwg or a czw that have um very loyal followings um mm -hmm. and, and people who always pick up the dvds or, or download and then there's other places where you know you want to get out there and you want to work and um you know uh black diamond wrestling for example uh, although Black Diamond now has uh, YouTube and, and and streams a lot of their shows, mm -hmm. the internet's a, a, a huge venue for um, because if you if you're online, you can be seen by anyone. Mm -hmm. So um, and then it becomes you know beholden to the performers to get our names out there to make sure that people you know get the Twitter following going, get the Facebook going. Get the Pro Wrestling Tees store. Mm -hmm. But I'm close to 500. That's one. That's a quarter of the way to a Pro Wrestling Tees store. So that's um, right. You, that, that's the limitation. You got to get five, two thousand. Two thousand followers. Two thousand followers. And, and then you, you, they let you have a store. Yes, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, you want to, you want to know something that makes me absolutely sick to my stomach? Look up how many followers Dylan Bostic has right now. Oh, <laughs> just look. No, look it up. Okay, look, okay. Look. I, I know the story behind this too, but I'll, I'll go look it up for you. So you want to explain? kind of the situation um uh, well i uh you know it, it's getting twitter followers is hard you got to get your name i'm doing pretty well i'm close to 500 and i was just happened to be uh clicking through and i saw that i think dylan like retweeted something of yeah, mine yeah, or, or yeah, something yeah. like that it's like oh always good to get a retweet and i looked at the number of followers yet i can't see followers it on... 213 thousand. jesus wow. christ <laughs> And I, I realized. By the way, picture from uh, Saturday Night in IWC is yeah. his cover. And I was like, "That is a hundred pro wrestling tea stores." <laughs> <laughs> what the? And, and I, I saw him at a at VOW, and he said some smart ass thing to me. He's like, "You know what? I hope you lose your password. <laughs> I hope I, ho I hope you lose your password and that you can't reclaim your name." I, I hope that he was like, "I'd kill myself." <laughs> you know how he got that, right? I'm assuming OVW. Well, no. Um, so he does the whole Justin Bieber gimmick. And from yeah. what, this is the story I was told. Uh -huh. um, apparently, because he does the whole Justin Bieber gimmick thing and everything, mm -hmm. somehow, the, you know how crazy Justin Bieber fans are. Sure. And I forget which it would chicken or egg with this. Like, either they latched on to him or somehow. Or he latched on to the Bieber. Well, both. Yeah. Both. But also, somehow, he actually got to meet or tweet with Justin Bieber's family in some capacity. Oh, God. and they just <laughs> attached to him. Lucky. And now he's got this like, this like Justin Bieber juice on him. And <laughs> Ew. Take that how you will. <laughs> I just lost Damon. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> we just lost transmission to Texas. Oh, <laughs> so oh, so God. that's we why this happened. Here. 
if we weren't mildly like you know, if we if we put titles on the show, like that would be the title. <laughs> <show>. <laughs> so that's gonna be the Instagram video for tomorrow uh, for this show. He um, got Justin Bieber juice on. <laughs> uh, but but then he gets to work that you know, and absolutely, and, and that's and awesome. And I love that he's working in the area. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I've seen him in VOW. He, mm -hmm. He's teaming with the guy down there. I know. Uh, uh, oh God, not, why are you putting me on the spot? Their direction. Someone. Their direction. direction. I, I, I saw him originally. Uh, she was actually wrestling in RWA. Raylan. Now they're doing Raylan. Yes, yeah. uh, doing great stuff now with IWC. And and just like like it was just like every time I'm like, wow, this is there's something going on here. Then I heard the rest of that. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Um, but uh, but no, a lot. It, 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 you know, VOW. They're doing that, and they were they were doing this thing where they were sitting on these chairs, like on mm -hmm. top on the top of their chairs, watching. Yeah. I I forget who who's in in the ring, um, and they're sitting and they're, there's fans just like bugging them, and they're mm -hmm. like you know, and they're and they're giving it back, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, okay, these guys, these guys are great. Keep an eye on them. Yeah, you know, and Bostic's and, fantastic. Oh yeah, Bostic's yeah. amazing. Um, but uh, certainly, I don't know where do we go from there. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, Twitter. Just, but I mean, uh, sort of to to loop it all the way back around. Um, it, it's beholden on us to, right. you know, if we do have those opportunities to be seen online mm -hmm. or on Ring of Honor or whatever, now we got to take the ball and run with it as well. Yeah. We have to make sure that we get the followers, that we spread the word and that, you know. This is a problem because I really look at, I, early on I wanted to try, I used to do a freelance show when I was going on mm -hmm. my own here as, as a business and wanted to kind of talk to other people, figure it out as I was figuring it out and that was kind of the crux of it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get a pro wrestler on. Because I think, like, you know, we always say, hell, they're independent contractors and this. We're like, mm -hmm. you guys are freelancers, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and where, you know, I go on, it's like, okay, I wanna do video editing and podcasting, I wanna do all this stuff, but mm -hmm. I have to figure out the business side. Mm -hmm. You guys do the same thing. You're like, I have to figure out how to do my image. You know, mm -hmm. on top of being an athlete, on top of putting on a good show, on top of being a character, mm -hmm. and you have to extend that onto it. Now you have to learn, like, how do I do all that now? On social media, and, and how do you and create how, a brand? And how do you do all that and translate it into dollars? Because right. there's, um, I mean, you can have the greatest uh, character gimmick uh, be amazing, bell to bell, but for whatever reason, can't translate it into ticket sales, can't translate mm -hmm. it into a payday, mm -hmm. can't translate it into merchandise. There, I, and I see some people, um, whether they're given or they were, they they came up with this gimmick. You know, mm -hmm. I, I see a couple out guys out there where. They have a, a, a gimmick that kind of fits them, mm -hmm. but I've never seen them grow into that character. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everybody else around them is coming up with better ideas than they are. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean? I, like, you know, that kind of thing. And, and kind of seeing that. And I think that's, uh, you know, kind of a sixth sense of wrestling to connect those dots. Sure. I mean, one of the, one of the people who has been absolutely fantastic at it is Facade. And if you want, if you he want to talk, he brings a mall with him. He had a clothes rack yeah. at Meadville. Mm -hmm. And if you want to talk about somebody who has taken his persona mm -hmm. and taken his image and translated it into something that can make money, it's facade. I mean, and and you know, uh, the, you can't deny that the man has has a. Um, he was selling bandanas and and he does like, them all himself. Yeah, and and t shirts mm -hmm. and. All this stuff, all the the little like um, like eight bit image of facade. My brother and, bought one. Yeah, like, <laughs> and, and he's been he's been great. And that's that's something that I've always looked at, and I've always been because I got my little box of t shirts and eight by tens. Facade, you know, backs in a U haul. It's like all right, <laughs> but you or, know, or children's here, you know, adults here. Uh, you know, the action mm -hmm. figures are in the back. But he's like, also, he's a bright character. He mm -hmm. plays off the Ninja Turtle thing, and Absolutely. the kids love him. You know, yeah. I always say about that, that, that uh, resolution, Anthony Gaiman was with me. At, Kevin Nash was there as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And we, we didn't look that, we looked down at intermission. We're just like, Facade has a longer line than Kevin Nash mm -hmm. at intermission. Yeah. It was like, and this is, I mean, yeah. years ago. You know, yeah. that was like three or four resolutions ago, and they've been gone for a couple yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of the other, other person who immediately springs to mind is Gory. You know, as far as somebody mm -hmm. who, you know, because because Gory's really taken his image and him and Raver have really done something with it. And that's mm -hmm. that's challenging. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just now and, now. and he's been around. He was around a while before he really grew into that part of it. Sure. Too. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I was around for so many years before I even got a T-shirt before I even. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, the the me, me, me T-shirt, which was off the, the Daniel Bryan shirt. I actually owe that to um, David Starr who was um, 
because I, I'd been doing the me, me, me. And he was like, dude, you should make a, a t-shirt like the yes, yes, yes shirt. And I initially kind of blew him off. I was like, it's kind of tacky. That's, that's kind of. Have you seen pro wrestling yeah, and then, <laughs> have, you, have you seen the amount of bullet cup t-shirts? Yeah. And we have a bullet cup rib <laughs> t-shirt. Too. And I finally said, screw it. I'll do it. And I took him to the first, I think it was a VOW show. And I just, boom, they, I paid for the t-shirts plus that mm-hmm. night. I was like, okay, I, I, I guess this Welcome is Welcome to merchandise. Yeah, I guess this is where we're going. <laughs> so yeah, and anything you can, you can figure out on that, you know, and, and mm-hmm. it's great to have other people, you know, cause I know for me, uh, it, it takes somebody else to look at the thing I'm doing. It's like, well, why don't you do this thing? Mm-hmm. And that's like, well, that's the thing that's going to make me money. Holy crap. You know, mm-hmm. and, and you need that. And luckily wrestling, you're around enough people to maybe look at you. Very creative. You know, people, look at yeah. you, look at you sideways, be like, oh, that's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, look at it from a different angle there. Cause, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, uh, that's awesome. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, well, hey, man, uh, you, you've been quiet over there, except for when I've cracked you up earlier. You got any questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think because I, I, I actually really like this talk just in general when it comes to because I feel like you you're somebody that definitely understands the all the intricacies of going of being a professional wrestler beyond just wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, like we kind of talked about like the little things that go into it. Um, I guess a good question would be um, is if there's a, one thing you could tell any aspiring professional wrestler, what would it be? Hmm. I, I tell them a couple things. Um... I would tell them first and foremost that if you got into this to fill some void in your own ego, if you need to if you got into this to be the tough guy, the cool guy, if you got into it for those reasons, head for the hills right away. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know that so many people who come into professional wrestling, you know, are are, are have have self image and ego issues and i mean i suppose every anyone who would choose to do this has it to some degree Mm -hmm. but if you're worried about looking foolish or you're worried about looking silly or you're worried about anything like that sir you've decided to put on tights and uh get in front of a crowd and silly was about six exits ago we we've even as fans I, i've broken this mm-hmm. down several times on the show when i feel like mm-hmm. we're getting far too serious about this mm-hmm. thing that we love called pro wrestling we like listen we sit here on a podcast or sit together watching mm-hmm. a show every week for three hours now okay oh, mm-hmm. um i don't care how big a fan you are that's just yeah. rough um of people you know fake fighting in the ring with tights yes you know I went to a burlesque show a couple of months ago mm-hmm. and I was like, this is getting a little uncomfortable. And I'm like, wait a minute. I film pro wrestling. <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure which one that is, but yeah. either way, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, and, and I think t- um, if you are, you know, if you get into wrestling and you're your own biggest fan, it's. It, I think it's going to be rough. I think the other thing that I would tell, you know, aspiring pro wrestlers is, is that so much of what we do is not bell to bell. It's not, you know, the wrestling moves. Mm-hmm. Um, I would tell people, you know, things to to really invest in: high quality gear, a nutritionist, um, you know, a gym membership. Um, Acting lessons, if that's something that you know, you, we were you're talking lacking. about. We were talking about earlier about RJ City. I believe mm-hmm. he does improv. Yeah, back home, and um, that those little intangibles mean so much because I, I think even CM Punk, and I, I think he was being rather glib about it earlier this week, had said, you know, what is it? You know, how good is it to be the best pro wrestler in the world? And he kind of said, well, it doesn't mean that you know all that much. Yeah. And you know, some people were were very you know, uh, you know, offended by that. Well, whoa, was it, was he shitting on pro wrestling? No, he's right. Um, you know, the best pro wrestler is very rarely in the main event, making the most money. I mean, it, wrestling is not a meritocracy in that way. Mm. It is not the best wrestler is the main event. You know, if that was the case, the main event of WrestleMania would be, you know, Cesaro and Dolph Ziggler or, um, you know, Tyson Kidd and Daniel Bryan. And um, 
you know, it's that's just not it. There's so much more that goes into it. Awesome. Well, I want to get to the uh, big questions that we have here to okay. close out the interview. Uh, first of all, this is one that our friend Matt Carlin's came up with a while ago. Really good one. Okay. Um, so what are you watching in wrestling now? Hmm. I'm watching uh, a lot of New Japan. Mm -hmm. I'm watching Ring of Honor. I'm, I'm watching... Um, I'm trying to keep my ear to the ground on PWG. To, I'm trying to see what's next. Right. Because mm -hmm. it seems like the WWE will is where the most number of eyes are. But they're not always on the cutting edge as far as the, there's a lot of things. They're starting to. NXT is starting to to be the, the, the cutting edge. And I think they're starting to realize that, you know, in addition to being the industry leader, they can also be the innovator if they choose to. And, and, and you look at the talent that they're pulling from, pulling from to go to NXT, you know, Prince Devitt, uh, Pac, Neville, um, and, and, and guys who were innovators and guys who are really pushing the envelope. And I think that's the people to watch is, is okay, what's next? What's pushing the envelope? So like Lucha Underground could be the next ECW for all we know. For all we know, and yeah. I mean Lucha and Lucha Underground's you know very entertaining and mm -hmm. and and doing some things that are, that are that are different. Um, Ring of Honor is always trying to push the envelope with uh, you know not just athleticism but you know talent that you don't you know they're discovering the next uh, big things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I I, th I try to always keep my eyes on the horizon. What's what's new? What's coming up? What's um, what is going to be cool in six months? So, you know, I think that's what, uh, what, what I, being in the industry, what I need to watch. Which is, as we're seeing, was yeah. what's going to be cool at WrestleMania in five years. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Or, or, or vary it, that number, but, but, mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, how hot was, uh, Devitt just a little while ago and, um, you know, Finn Balor for, for, for those mm -hmm. who don't, aren't familiar with his New Japan work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he was coming out with the with the body paint and the bullet club and these really elaborate entrances. And, you know, it was only a very small number of people who actually knew who he was and knew about. It, but they were they were like, oh, this is so cool. You got to see this. He goes to NXT and he just shows up in the paint and the place erupts. Um, and, and and so what was cutting edge and kind of niche starting to move into starting to move into the mainstream mm -hmm. so and it's such an interesting thing with nxt because it's the hardcore fans that are going there and erupting and they were like mm -hmm. i know who this guy is i know he's from japan i know this mm -hmm. you know and they erupt and now you're exposing that reaction like mm -hmm. everybody's like wow what, what's the deal with this guy yeah you know yeah and, and that's why i always worry about that transitioning to the bigger mainstream crowd mm -hmm. and i'm so happy when i see something as goofy as it is seeing callisto guy mm -hmm. that you know i've seen in iwc and i mm -hmm. love seeing him do that and doing really awesome stuff about mm -hmm. lucha lucha the mm -hmm. goofiest thing but i see the raw crowd get into it get into it yes you yeah. know good good for him and even mm -hmm. whatever version of sincara this is you know <laughs> you watch, know watch free sincara watch free sincara there you go but you know yeah. it's crazy. like like sitting there uh, this week and saying i'm watching the ascension versus the lucha dragon i'm watching an nxt match guys mm -hmm. you know like seriously yeah. and, and you're gonna see that like invade and, and see what comes up next and it's really cool that they're capturing that thing mm -hmm. which is exactly why we have an indie sh show here why mm -hmm. we have ring of honor what you know, why we watch it at least and i think a lot of fans really can latch on to oh i knew him when i mean oh, we I, do a lot of that yeah. around here and yeah. then we've talked about that it's like oh, that's our guy mm -hmm. you know like it's great like you know watching ring of Honor, but like oh, ray rose in there mm -hmm. that's, that, that's that's our guy I, yeah. that's the guy i watched when i first started coming to the shows and he's here. doing suplexes and he's and doing suplexes he's doing yeah. great dong castle popping up there yeah. um i was so pleased i had not seen the episode with any episodes of dong castle doing his new entrance oh the entrance is he fantastic. did it he did it <laughs> saturday night at meadville and mm -hmm. it was like did he did he have the tate twins with him um, I don't know if they were the same people that's on Ring of Honor, but he had the two guys. Okay, he did the, that whole thing with the two guys. Because I, I, I quick story: the the <laughs> day he debuted that entrance mm -hmm. was when I was in Nashville for my match, mm -hmm. and I'm getting there and I'm you know getting my boots on and I you know not really I'm sort of in my own head because I'm I'm you know I'm oh my god Ring of Honor whatever. 
Look at this guy walks by in a loincloth. And I'm just like, the hell is this? What's going on over here? And there's Dalton. And I haven't seen this before either, you know, in his, in this, you know, get up. And I'm just like, well, I feel a little inadequate in a little vest. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> I wish you would have, I wish I would have seen that, you know, yesterday. Then I could have at least gone out and got, a, you know, blinking jacket, you know, pyro something. And I got to say. Mm. And in and to bring it back around, the burlesque show I went through a couple months ago <laughs> got me prepared for that entrance. I re, uh, the, the one other funny thing from that show is I was um, I, I, someone on Twitter was live tweeting the the show, and obviously because I'm a mark, I was you know oh Chris Larusso you know versus Cheeseburger in the open and blah 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 blah. <laughs> this guy tweeted out Ashley Six versus what appears to be a gay magician. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you couldn't have gotten the guy's name. <laughs> it's not hard. Yeah, you know, it's kind of memorable. You know, well, I, it was. It, I just remember thinking, like, well, you got obviously his name. You were paying attention. It's Dalton Castle. So, wow. <laughs> and then finally, what is the best and worst thing about being in indie wrestling? I don't know if I can follow up after that. <laughs> no, I think that might have been be both. I just. <laughs> <laughs> to have your career summed up in one phrase. Uh, yeah, mine, Discount Miz. Uh, Where did that come from? I, I didn't. I don't know the origin of The this. origin was just um, people say I, I look like The Miz. I, 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 I've struggled with seeing it because like, there have been some times where you know a photo is like, eh, I can kind of see it. And then they're like, no, not at all. And um, just to... To loop back, somebody at a, at a VOW show, I think it was Bradley Brothers, um, who's a fan who, who goes to a bunch of the local shows, um, started chanting it. And it was one of these little things, you know, discount Miz. And I could have just gone kind of creative. But I listened and I was like, there's something, you know. And I turned and I yelled and I screamed at him. <laughs> and then the entire section starts screaming it back at me. And I got out of the ring and, you know, pitched a fit and whatever. And, you know, as stupid as it is, hell, you know, it's it caught fire. And, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, now now I can either, you know, sit here, and, you know, stomp my feet. I, re I do remember. And I'm sorry I keep segueing away from stories. Uh, well, last time I was at one of the Ring of Honor camps, Jay Lethal pulled me aside. He's like, I, I have some advice for you. And I'm obviously like, oh, you know. Sure, what 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 is it? Please please tell me. He's like, I want you to get an eight by ten. I want you to send a picture of yourself to the WWE. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is, you know, you, you you think I've got something. It's like, you know, I saw the Miz is doing this stunt double gimmick. And <laughs> <laughs> but hey, as you said, it's an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, you got an address? Come here, let's do this. I don't know. Nothing ever came of it, but I think Ms. Dow did better than I would have anyway. So. I, I I can't imagine anybody doing his <laughs> doing that thing better than he did. That thing better than he did. The the, the mimicking was was a football. But the, anyways, back to the question. The best and worst thing about uh, the the worst the the best thing is that you get to do what you want to do since you were a little kid. It's it's being a pro wrestler. Run around and, and be the ultimate warrior. Run around and, and be the <laughs> ultimate warrior. Do clotheslines. Uh, you know we've been. <laughs> You've been jumping off, you know, the top rope onto a mattress or into a pool since, you know, a lot of us were doing it from the time we were kids. I get to do it for real on the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, the worst part is the time lost. And, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, they'll talk about the bumps and they'll talk about the miles and they'll talk about the pain and, and, and you know, shitty pay, no pay, um, losing money, uh, you know, all these things. I think one of the hardest things is things that you give up in that if you want to be good at this, you're going to miss birthdays, graduations. Um, your girl's probably going to be really pissed at you for choosing to go to a professional wrestling show instead of fill in the blank. Um, yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, people, I think they can understand the pain. I think they can understand the time. I don't think they understand time lost. 
And and until you have your family or, you know, a girlfriend or somebody just sort of look at you like, really? you, Where were you? For how much money? For what? All right. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes, and you don't, and a lot of times you don't get those moments back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it sucks, but if you want to be good at this, yeah, that's, that's the trade-off. So I, I I won't say pain. I'll say it's the, it's the time lost. So sorry. I didn't mean to bring it down. Jeez. Got real song on that note. Yeah. <laughs> on that note. There we go. <laughs> well, Chris LaRusso, he's at Chris LaRusso on the Twitters. And what's coming up for you? Uh, hold on. I got to get this right or else I'm going to be in big trouble. <laughs> VOW, of course, right? VOW is May 2nd. I want to say May 2nd. I think it's May 2nd. Yeah. May 2nd in Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, this weekend, I am will be you'll be able to see me uh friday no no geez get the right month uh friday april 17th in brilliant ohio for black diamond wrestling saturday april 18th martin's ferry for black diamond wrestling uh april 19th in oil city pennsylvania for dark horse championship wrestling uh april 25th for remix pro wrestling uh pwx is also running that date in uh, mckeesport pennsylvania um as we said may 2nd uh, VOW in Connellsville, PA. That's their uh, women's tournament as well as that night. Jeez, um, oh, I'm, I'm... I guess check out. They did a women's only show. Well, for the most part. Then mm. they had Super Oprah against G-Raver as a feature. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It, it see mm. that they featured the women's. It looks like it's going to be at least a big part it, of the, this it, year's show. It's very going to be a very the big... Queen of the Ring. Yeah. So. And uh, last one, I last one at least is within the next couple weeks is May 9th, PWX's future show, which is their uh, rookies show, and um, those have actually been, I mean, a, a big success, and you get to mm -hmm. see a lot of guys who are who are fresh out of the school, um, you know, and some of them mixing it up with some of the more experienced talent. I love those shows because uh, IWC does a version of that called Proving Grounds. Yes, and that's like a lot of people that are big now in the company have come from that, and, and mm -hmm. when you get to see something different, you know, somebody different. They get to sure. like. You know, get a different mix of people, and and, and even mm -hmm. and even some people that don't seem to continue with IWC, I've seen pop up in VOW and in uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, another guy, a, a guy you worked the last show I was at, uh, Alex Daniels, I think his name Alex is. Alex Daniels, yeah, yeah. Well, he was just in the Battle Royal this past weekend. He's popped mm -hmm. up a couple times in IWC. He's a since. Uh, AIW guy, I believe. I think he is. And, yeah, uh, yeah. He he, I um uh, I really think he's got a. There was a couple guys who were down at the last Ring of Honor camp. Alex Daniels was one of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Graham Wellington, who's a PWX guy. Okay. And Andrew Palace. And, and dude, Palace. And is... Palace, uh, I mean, I hope I'm not speaking out of school here, but in my opinion, Palace did fantastic mm -hmm. at the Ring of Honor camp. And and I would not be surprised to see him uh, maybe show up there at some point in the future. So I, oh. I really hope so. He, I, I am a huge fan of, of, of Andrew Palace. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, friend of the show. Uh, he's in our, one of the cool. Uh, we're completely. Well, this can segue. We're going mm -hmm. to get a general wrestling conversation here. Mm -hmm. But and I don't know. I'll probably talk about this on the show. Really cool seeing guys like that that mm -hmm. I've seen. You know, being doing the stuff with IWC for so long. And a lot of times, the guys help me out. Mm -hmm. You know, the trainees, right? Sure. Uh, pulling cord, whatever. And he's one of those guys that you know that you got to see grow from a trainee. And sure. see what he's become now is is really mm -hmm. awesome, um, you know. Uh, and uh, and he's and he's doing a lot of fun stuff. He's really killing it right now with uh, uh, you know the IWC mm -hmm. super indie side, and uh, he's had a lot of great opportunities working Zima, working work uh, Shima, mm -hmm. uh, working Matt Striker, and 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 yeah, he's definitely one to look out for if you guys haven't checked that. And, and Alex Daniel as well. I think mm -hmm. he's you know he's he's the next guy. I think the pop up like like Palace has. I mean, I mean he's yeah. one of, like he hasn't had an opportunity to do too much that mm -hmm. I've seen, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I there's something there's something there. He's got a lot of potential. Guy. I mean, sure. he absolutely has a lot of potential. I really enjoyed uh you know the match with him at, at VOW and mm -hmm. and I really like seeing you know one of the things I always tell trainees and and rookies and new guys is sort of like I hope you understand you have a better chance of making it than I do. You're brand new. Right. You you're nothing but potential. Right. And you don't have the miles, you don't have the bumps, you don't have the you all have pure potential. It's up to you what you do with it. 
So mm -hmm. great advice to end that out. So, mm -hmm. all right, on that, let's talk a little bit of so what's going on around in the indie wrestling world. We mentioned Meadville a couple of times here. Mm -hmm. Great show this past weekend. Um, this is, uh, I like doing this. this. This is like the biggest show, mm -hmm. that I, which is funny. We have to go all the way up to Meadville to do the biggest show of the year. <laughs> uh, but uh, last I heard, about 1,300 people. Um, this Fantastic. is this is funny, and I didn't mean this as a slight when I tweeted this on Sunday night, mm -hmm. but I'm watching the WrestleMania weekend supercard show mm -hmm. and realizing I just came from filming a show that had way more people than that were obviously in that crowd. Mm -hmm. Is really, I, 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 you know, granted, we have like, I don't know, Ric Flair is there and Kevin mm -hmm. Nash and everything, but the main show is still like, like the worst case as far as like not featuring the, the talent of the promotion, Tommy mm -hmm. Dreener or Ida, mm -hmm. you know. But still, beyond that, I I've been really excited because I don't. There hasn't been filler matches, even like the most throwaway thing. Dylan Bostic and Keith Hot has been entertaining every time. Hell yeah! Any other year indie show that is just a match that's there, mm -hmm. you know. And and I think that's that really shows. You know, as we were talking about with Dylan and Hot's also really awesome too. I think mm -hmm. um, and another guy to kind of look out for and something different. Mm -hmm. you know um but other than that you know we talked about a little bit kevin nash really surprised me did a lot of stuff in the ring mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I don't think he did too much he was teamed with uh, aaron draven in uh resolution the one time we went up uh, when mm -hmm. Amen was with me as i mentioned um, and i remember i remember being impressed with him then too like i i, I remember his performance like kind of shocking me as well mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. but yeah but uh but no a really fun show fun battle royal uh, i have to i have to share this and i think I'm really determined that I'm going to take some of the footage from the Battle Royale and make a Best of Space Monkey video. Have we heard of this? This is brand new. I didn't know until he came out the curtain. He has a monkey suit. It's a space suit. They put a helmet on him when they were carrying him away. Like, he had, the, he had an astronaut helmet and everything. It's, um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm... I'm not tapping out yet, but okay. So it's it's space space monkey. monkey. And do you have a picture? Hold on. Of, Better oh. yet, I think I have the video. I'll have to find oh, his, his spot Lord. in the battle royal. But this is one of the this this is what I love about pro wrestling is the mm. surprises. Okay. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that you know uh, sort of the loop back the first time Dalton Castle came out with the uh, you know uh, with his. I, what what would we call those gentlemen who are with him? I mean, when when the first time that whole entrance took place, there were literally people in the front row. Oh, wait, and here here oh, is Space uh, Monkey. Let's see spoiler, it. Spoiler: Space Monkey got eliminated from the Battle Royal, uh, and she's uh, so we'll show so, you a little bit, but you'll you'll get to see him here in a moment. Um, but but anyways, you were saying. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, I'm, wait, wait. Here's your spot. He's getting carried away. There's Space Monkey being carried away. And, so, <laughs> and the referee, thank you, thank you, Cle Jay Clemens, for putting the helmet back on Space Monkey. But and uh, and uh, uh, Joe Nebraska was a big fan of this. There's a little huh. bit of you there. <laughs> Bro, I want, I want to see more. You want to see more? I want to well, see. Well, you'll more. have to check out the digital I'll download be, at, uh, at PittsburghWrestling.com for nine ninety nine. For nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get the rest of it. Too. Oh, okay. I was about to Actually, say. Actually, dollar ninety nine for just the battle royal. Oh, okay. Appreciate sure nine ninety nine is worth it for space monkey alone. For space monkey, <laughs> that's I mean, true. Somebody, but uh, you know, there's for, something that's marketable. Right uh, when Dalton came out with his thing in Nashville, I, there were people in the front row like. <laughs> 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 oh in nashville wow. yeah yeah no that, that this was this was a kicker that they, they they had the show at the uh at the fairgrounds yeah which is the, you know the, the, the historic yeah the the uh, the uh asylum yeah. uh the, this historic building that has had you know the Jarrett family and, and you know legendary matches for for generations and generations and you know uh by the way wrestling in nashville is the most fun i, I at least the most fun crowd I have mm -hmm. ever uh, wrestled in front of because they were they were hot from the word go and they were in and they were down for everything. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the Tate twins. <laughs> Jesus, and they no. undress him. Well, I mean that. Look, it's it's. There's nothing wrong with that. That is an elaborate outfit. Mm -hmm. I mean that that you you clearly need some help with that. <laughs> so. You try taking off a full body jumpsuit that's like, that that has wings. That has wings. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> yep. pro wrestling. <laughs> um, but 
what the hell were we talking I about? I have no <laughs> idea. Space monkey. Space monkey. And the this party thing party and peacock. Party peacock and oh geez. Fantastic. Oh, Wait a minute. Is that Vicky? What? Is that 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 lunatic fan who is that? Oh, you're talking about Indie Mom with yeah. B-Rox? Yeah. Yeah, B-Rox makes the DVD a couple of times this time. Okay, was that yeah. was that yeah, Indie so, Mom? Oh, yeah, that's, oh that's God. Indie Mom. Yeah. Um, We'd have a whole special episode on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> David Starr called her Rape Woman. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> This is this is indie wrestling, guys. Yeah. It's those weird little <laughs> things. And I'm, I am, and I'm sure you have I, something I, well, like this going on in Texas. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh absolutely. <laughs> oh my god. My that's amazing. <laughs> oh Jesus. Um, I'm sure she's been always been very nice to me. Oh, she seems. Oh, it, it, do, do you know? Do you know the story about how? Uh, you know, she was wheeled out of the the wrestleplex. I heard the story. So okay. do we want to talk, get into that here? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just. I, I I really want to hear it. Oh, so I, I don't I, think I shared this with Damon. I I, I, okay. I think this is new to him. Um, so, oh boy, were Vicky, you, were you there for I this? I was. I was there in the okay. light booth because I was watching I, the end of this match. I it, think it was, Dombrowski shared this with me. It was, um, and Dombrowski's losing his mind. Yeah, he was calling it. Um, <laughs> Wait, is he calling the situation? No, he's calling the match. Okay. The situation was happening during the match. Okay. So, uh, Vicky, uh, Indie Mom, is a huge Jack Pollock fan. Just the right. biggest Jack Pollock fan in the world. Isn't Jack, uh, isn't and he got something, doesn't he have some kind of social media angle to his character? Or uh, he was the, the was next trending topic. The next trending topic, right. Yes. Right. And um, Jack's, uh, the at the time, the PWX heavyweight champion, and Gory is just beating him from pillar to post, wall to wall, and is is tearing him up. And Jack's in big trouble, and he might be ready to lose the title. And and, and the place is going nuts because Gory's, you know, so Gory, Gory. And Vicky, it like, stands up and has one hand on the rail and one hand, like, grabbing her chest. And, you know, she's screaming, Jack! Jack! And you know, Jim Miller comes over, is trying to calm her down, and and B Rax is trying to calm her down, and she looks like she's about B- to. B Rax is her son. Yes. Uh, by the way, Mark Madden call, uh, called him uh, 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 Justin Bieber's twin or something <laughs> on, on commentary Saturday night. Second, so. second Justin Bieber reference of this yes. podcast. Uh, That's right. That, yeah, you know, there we go. Big. And and she looks like she's about to have a stroke, and they. Take her out of the building, and they have to end up calling an ambulance oh my because God. she has become so hysterical that she is almost seizuring. So they are getting her into the ambulance, and Gory's music plays. <laughs> now, it was a dusty finish. So Jack is still technically... Look it up if you don't want to know what the dusty finish is. Sure. <laughs> is is J- uh, Jack Pollock is still technically the PWX heavyweight champion. But we were thinking that Vicky is going to die thinking that Gory, she, she's going to hear Gory's music and it's just going to send her over the edge and she's going to be finished. Gory is escorted from the building for, you know, it, it, get, it gets crazy. She's in the back of the ambulance and Gory in full bloody makeup with the oh thing. Oh my God. Gets up to the, to the window of the ambulance. Oh. Ah! Oh no! And, I didn't know, but I didn't know this part. Yeah, <laughs> and so she's being wheeled away. Corey's right there. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh my god! <laughs> that 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 happened. So. Oh god! To answer your earlier question, Sorg, no, we don't have that in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for those that may be on video. And don't know what Jason Gore looks like. This is what she saw. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last thing you ever see. I don't think we can get better than that. I, no. I, I have no nothing else from Meadville that can beat that. Um, we we talked about we referenced some of this. Check out. We talked a little bit more about it. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Mm. Um, wow. I don't even know what to do about that. Is there any shows coming up we need to talk about, Eamon? Is anything worthwhile? <laughs> um. I, I will uh, bring up uh, to mention that uh, speaking of you know we mentioned Ring of Honor a lot. Uh, if you do have Ring of Honor in your area, I would encourage you to watch them this week uh, because it starts the uh, the shows from the San Antonio tapings. I and we look for Eamon in the audience. You can uh, also um, 
Inspire Pro Champion Andy Dalton's featured on that episode. Nice. Uh, he kind of gets killed by Ray Rowe, but even still. Um, but uh, did he look him. good doing it? That is as we conversed about on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Yes, as well as Dalton Castle will be on this week's episode. Nice. So, uh, oh, a real quick, a real quick from that. Was this the taping that had uh, Shane Taylor? Because I believe Shane Taylor. Shane, Shane was in a dark match. Right? Okay, because okay. I know Shane, Shane had just recently got a. Uh, They're one of our guys. Yeah, who was getting a. a, a and this is the this is the weird thing. We've talked about this. Me and Nate. so so he's down there experiencing all the guys that I've experienced up here because Ro goes down there. Shane Taylor goes yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, McChesney went down there for just a short stint mm-hmm, with, sure. with Ro. It just, and and plus, like this is the first time this has not happened. Usually after a Pittsburgh show, they go right down to San Antonio like the next week. Like it's this weird thing. I'm not sure. I mean, it's I like don't. it's like they know we're connected. I yeah, mean, but there's yeah, there's a there's a, a couple connections now with uh, with Texas and uh, and Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and P- Pittsburgh, Cleveland, that sort of you know mm-hmm. this area up here. It was weird last week. We had uh, actually uh, Evan Jalistico was on this show. Mm-hmm. We had Sarah Finney on Mayhem show because we were talking about AJ Lee retiring. We want to have a woman wrestler coming sure, on to sure. talk about that, and then they ended up at the same wrestling show Friday night. <laughs> it's a small wrestling world, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, but uh, hey, because he's coming from what St. Louis or something, right? St. So, Louis, yeah. So, mm. and she's of course here. I don't, I don't know where the hell they ended up. I just know they were the same place. But anyway, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Well, anything else going on? Anything else to look for on ROH or anything else in the? Uh, the only thing that's uh, really cool news that was actually announced yesterday that involves oh. me or the company I work for, technically. Um, is that we've actually, uh, someone who we've actually had on the Wrestling Mayhem show a few years back, uh, Tom Filsinger, who, uh, oh, of yes. course, is, uh, is the head of Filsinger Games. Yes. Uh, uh, in- it was announced that Inspire Pro Wrestling is going to be a part of their newest pack, uh, which is really, really cool for us because, uh, you know, they you know they have Ring of Honor, uh, Chikara, Evolve, like a lot of big top indies are uh, are part of their uh, card game and and we're going to have uh, some of our wrestlers featured uh, in an exclusive pack so that's going to be really cool uh, yeah. and uh, we just announced that uh, yesterday and uh, the uh, pack should be coming out later this spring that's awesome so yeah, it's crazy great, um, great company very, very looks ring, ring of arch car evolve wrestling that's all, that's great definitely so it's, it's really cool to share you know with with you know that kind of lineup and stuff you like see? that so is really fun involved, stuff. There is, I don't know, maybe I'm, this, these were early rumblings. I'm getting emails about this, but I, I think there's like a wrestling geek fest happening in Cleveland in August. And I think he's involved in that in some is it? some some way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm getting details. I'm hoping to be able to announce something soon as that comes along. Uh, but uh, really interesting that we're getting something up here to that. I guess it's like a WrestleCon-ish mm-hmm. thing, but just in Cleveland? <laughs> um so i i don't know I, the more i learn about this um i'm hoping to be able to share as we go along maybe we can have an indie mayhem show presence there so maybe all right on that note uh let us know any indie wrestling uh that's coming up let us know uh, on twitter's at mayhem show and of course like i mentioned before uh you can hit us up good times at wrestling mayhem show no it's not the impact watch it's a no- different show um <laughs> 412-206-0 <laughs> show. good times at wrestling mayhem show.com oh hey impact check out davy richards versus M- versus dj zima island from ion Ion, not Island, from uh, this past Friday. Uh, there's at least a clip of it on their YouTube channel for Impact Wrestling. I uh, said, talk to talk to Zima a little bit about it, and uh, looks like it was a really fun match from a little bit I saw of it. Uh, so, uh, so check that out. Sounds like a friend of the show doing really good down there. Please subscribe WrestlingMayhemShow.com to this, the Indie Mayhem Show, and everything else we're doing. All forms of wrestling talk and stuff. Check out BasicSickness.com for the Muzak that we got going on. Um, and of course, our friends. Ah, oh, jeez, I was just rwalive.com sorry show this weekend that's where i'll be um spring fling uh including uh you know chris taylor is gonna be is originally uh mickey knuckles is supposed to be part of this but it turns out she's pregnant and has retired from wrestling so um i did we of course talked about no we didn't talk about because that was after last week's shows wasn't it yeah yeah um, uh, you talked about it on a uh, on, a on one of the day. mayhem minutes that's right um, but no, she's retired from wrestling, and apparently the show that we did with her in RWA, which was a false count anywhere intergen- intergender match between her and Nicholas Esteban Taylor, Holy. was her last match in pro wrestling. For wow. Her. So, got that interesting distinction. 
So yeah. I feel bad for yelling at her for slamming his head on my commentary table. <laughs> <laughs> but no hard feelings. I, I'm not, I wasn't mad. I was mad. Was any equipment destroyed? This is why we don't bring nice things ah, to okay. wrestling. Because I was like, oh, I wish I had better mics. I wish I had better cameras. I wish I could uh, bump what? this up a little bit. This is why we don't. Zorg, were you? I, I'm sorry. I don't want to drag this on too long. Did, did you come to a PWX where your camera lens was kicked off? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, to, sorry, to break, sorry you, to bring up a I'll bad memory. I'll tell you the further point of that story okay. off the air. Okay. Uh, on that note, please go check out everything. And, and as always, support indie Wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the Sick, sick, sick. You know how I now. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.